So there is Brancusi's probably most iconic work, The Endless Column, uh, which is a column consisting of um, simple geometric shapes that are lined up. Um, and of course it's not endless, but it proposes the idea of endlessness because conceptually you could continue this lining up of elements further and further into the endless. And here they already started like an interest um, to relate it to pole dance and ballet dance, both two techniques, dance techniques that I don't know so much about, that I don't have in my body. But I, of course, there is the relation between the pole and the column, aesthetically and formal. But I also thought, uh, content-wise, um, the idea of turning and spinning, potentially also to extend to an endlessness, could be interesting to relate to Brancusi. He already had quite a lot of approaches that I thought could be interesting to look at from a performative perspective and maybe make useful for dance and choreography. So he started already with this idea of the mobile groups and for this, especially towards the end um, of his life, he would see the work not alone anymore as the like isolated masterpiece that stands by itself, but more in relation to the other sculptures and the, the space between them. So they became like groups, like maybe even like families and each sculpture would be uh, a member of this family. So then he would start to just rearrange the sculptures and in this way make new constellations and make new works all the time. He then um, didn't want to sell the sculptures anymore because they were related to each other and you cannot just rip out one sculpture of the group, of the family, but he had to to survive and earn money. So when he would sell a sculpture, he would first make a copy of the sculpture, so the sculpture would still remain in the studio. But the original would go away and uh, the copy, copy would be usually made in plaster, where the original is in stone, wood or bronze. And I find this question very interesting, like what is uh, the original, what is the copy and what happens in this translation process into another material. And then further he also started to kind of stage his sculptures. Like he would photograph them and then really stage them with curtains behind, lighting them, like nearly like a per person. So he would inject like subjectivity into the sculptures. And that also relates a lot to my, my artistic work where I question a lot what is an object, what is a subject, what are the relations, the power relations between them. Um, and also breaking them, um, breaking the hierarchies. So from this place, I would invite the two dancers, uh, Yuri and Shade, and they would bring these dance techniques that are foreign to me into the studio because they, they are trained in these techniques and they are like um, embodied them. And I would come with the with the sculptural approach, because my main interest was how the sculptural approaches of Brancusi could be translated and made uh, useful for uh, dance and choreography. So for me, it was really about bringing these very different techniques together in one space and see how they in the first place coexist and then maybe also collide and mingle and how, yeah, what kind of similarities maybe there are and also what kind of differences. The, the setup of the work is that you have actually two frontalities, so audience is placed on both sides of the stage, classically on a tribune, but um, they are in opposition to each other. So half of the audience sees the other half of the audience on the other side. So. Um, on the one hand, I, I was very interested in the formal aspect of Brancusi because Brancusi works very formal, um, but also um, very, yeah, I would even say emotional or figurative. Like he is considered as an essentialist, 
That means he reduces the form to its essence, which I find is an interesting approach. It's also problematic um, because if you especially uh, reduce um, cultures or genders to their essence, they can become easily um, yeah, racist and sexist. And this also happened in a few of his works, I would say. But I was focusing more on yeah, the formal aspect. Um, so I wanted to bring this formality, the strictness into the set design and by um, proposing this, creating a base, a formal base that then could be broken again over the time of the work. Um, and the audience sitting in opposition to each other creates also that the audience in a way becomes part of it. You, see, you can see each other, the audience becomes also material. And this is also something that I have been using in my work before because I, I'm interested in these questions of what is visible, what are the logistics of the work, to not hide them behind the curtain, but like pulling them out on the stage and make it material and work with it. And the set design references very clearly Bancusi's work, like nearly like literal in, in the formality, but it is um, made out of aluminium plates and it creates kind of a, a in-between, a glitch between uh, two-dimensional and 3D. So it's kind of a puzzle, so these elements can be stuck into each other. Um, which is also a concept in a bit different way that Brancusi used. He combined different sculptures and would like uh, in this way also create new compositions. And these sculptures are made of aluminium, so metal. So they are kind of beautiful, they are shiny, they are reflecting, but they are also very sharp and in a way dangerous. So they are necess not necessarily made for dancing with. So in the work there are several of these sculptures and they are introduced by the dancers and they kind of constantly um, create new constellations with them. So it's a constantly shifting exhibition that happens inside a dance piece on stage. So the dancers are in, in this way also curating uh, this exhibition. In the first place they are manipulating the sculptures. But then with this information that the dancers become by interacting with the sculptures, um, they start to take this information away and make it material that then hopefully can stand by itself. So the, it creates kind of a feedback and in this way, or that's my, my hope or my interest, is that then in this way also the sculptures influence, manipulate or move the dances. So it's not only one way uh, direction, but it becomes this kind of feedback loop uh, 